All right, so continuing on with quadratic equations, sometimes you reach something you can't factor the normal way. And this is because you have a leading coefficient out in front that is not 1. This is a 2. So you actually have to end up multiplying something by 2 at the end. Now when you have something like this, you have to do what's called the rainbow method. The rainbow method. So that involves drawing a rainbow from the first number to the last number. So I'm going to draw a rainbow from this 2 all the way over to this 6. Now, whatever numbers the rainbow hits, you have to multiply together. So 2 times 6 is going to give me 12. And I put that at the top of my rainbow. So 12 is going to be called my rainbow number. And that's the number that I have to multiply to eventually. Now, I have to find two numbers that multiply to 12. But I also have to find two numbers that add up to the middle number. So I draw my MA chart over to this side. I have an M and I have an A, where the M stands for multiply and the A stands for add. So we're going to multiply to 12, but at the same time we have to add up to 7, since that's the middle number. So what are the two numbers that will multiply to 12 but add up to 7? That's going to be the 4 and the 3. So now I can break this up into 4 and 3. Now, if I need to add up to a 7x, then both of these need to have x's beside them. So actually I have 4x and 3x. So now I'm ready to factor. The only thing that's missing are those two end pieces that I haven't used yet. The 2x squared and the 6. So I'm going to bring both of those down. So I put the 2x squared right here, and I put the 6 right here. And between them, the pluses are going to come down. Okay, so now I have four different terms. I'm going to group the first two terms in parentheses like this. And then I'm going to group the last two terms in parentheses the same way. So now I have two different groups my 2x squared plus 4x, and my 3x plus 6. Now I need to take out the greatest common factor from both of the groups. So what do these two terms have in common? Well, I know that I can divide both of these coefficients by 2, since 2 can be divided by 2, and 4 can be divided by 2. So I know for a fact that I can take a 2 out. But I also know that both of these contain an x. So they have that in common as well. So I put an x on the outside. And inside the parentheses, I have whatever's left. Now, I already took out the 2x. I have another x that I have left on the inside, so I'm going to put that on the inside of the parentheses. The plus sign is going to come down. And then I need to figure out what goes right here. So I need to figure out what I need to multiply 2x by to get to 4x. And obviously I need to multiply by 2. So I'm going to have a 2 right here. Okay. Now I look at the second group, the 3x plus 6. What do these two terms have in common? Well, they can both be divided by 3. So I can take out a 3 from both of those. And I'm going to be left with something on this side. So since I took out the 3, I only have the x left. So I leave that on the inside. The plus is going to come down. And since I took out the 3, I have to figure out what I need to multiply the 3 by to get to the 6. And I need to multiply by 2. So now, notice what I have on the outside. I have a 2x and I have a 3 on the outside. But what's left on the inside? Well, it's the x plus 2. And these are actually duplicated. So they're going to actually merge into one copy when we get done with this. The outside parts I put together. So I'm going to have 2x plus 3. And then the x plus 2 and the x plus 2 are going to merge into one copy. So now we factored the polynomial.
I have everything still equal to zero, so I need to write equals to zero over here. So now I know what I need to set equal to zero. I'm going to have two different equations, like usual. So I'm going to have 2x plus 3 equals 0, and I'm going to have x plus 2 equals 0. And then I solve both for x. So the easiest one to solve would be the x plus 2 equals 0. What I can do with that one is I can subtract 2 from both sides to get the x by itself on the left side. And then over here, I have 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Now over here, this is a two-step equation. I need to get rid of the plus 3, and then after I get rid of the plus 3, I'm going to get rid of the 2 that's beside this x. So to get rid of the plus 3, I subtract 3 from both sides, and I see what I have left. The 2x is going to come down, and then 0 minus 3 is going to give me negative 3. So now the last thing I have to do is I have to get rid of this 2 on the side. Now since 2 and x are multiplied together, I can get rid of the 2 by doing the opposite of multiplying. And the opposite of multiplying is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2. So these 2's are going to cancel each other out. That's the whole reason for dividing. So when they cancel out, the x is going to come down. And then on this side, I'm going to get negative 3 over 2, which is a fraction. So you could also write this fraction as a decimal, but I'm going to keep it written as a fraction for now. So that's going to be my two answers, negative 3 over 2 and negative 2. So now that I know what my two answers are, I can write them in a solution set. So I'm going to put in negative 3 over 2 and negative 2. So notice my two answers, one of them is going to be a fraction. And the reason why this one is a fraction is because of my leading coefficient up here. So notice when I said I had a leading coefficient of 2, that's how I know I need to do the rainbow method to solve this. And that's exactly why I have a 2 in the denominator it's to account for this 2 up here. So I hope that helps you. Uh, that's how you solve quadratic equations by rainbow methods.